Have you ever wanted to see where the formidable and storied Elizabeth-class battleship HMS Warspite met her demise after 32 years of service? In this video, I take you to a stretch of treacherous Cornish coast where she ran aground in 1947 and where artifacts relating to her wreck can still be seen today. So join me as we pay our respects to the grand old lady. Now I'm not a naval historian, so I won't try to deliver a detailed lecture on the service of HMS Warspite, but let's start off with some basics. She was laid down in Devonport Dockyard in October 1915. She was then launched into the River Tamar a year later. She was 639 feet long. She had a beam of over 90 feet with a draft of 30 feet 6 inches and a crew which varied in size from about 995 to 1,200. Her initial armament consisted of eight 15-inch guns in four twin turrets. 14 single 6-inch guns, 2 single quick-fire 3-inch anti-aircraft guns, and 4 21-inch submerged torpedo tubes. When she was commissioned, she was one of the most powerful and flexible super dreadnoughts afloat. During her 32 years' service, she had endured bombing, shell fire, ramming, mines, and even a missile attack. She fought all over the world from Jutland during the Great War to Narvik, in the cold fjords of Norway, to Cape Matapan off the coast of Greece. She also helped enable the Normandy landings by providing naval bombardment to the landing forces, first supporting the British landings at Sword Beach, then the US landings at Utah, and then the British again at Gold Beach. Sailors often say that a ship embodies all of their hopes, aspirations, and their experiences, and because of this, she became more than just an expression of sea power, or another collection of men, iron and steel. The war spite was certainly much more than that, and became known to everyone who served on her as the Grand Old Lady. Right then, we just come out of this um track essentially it's like a boundary track in between two fields the english bocage um and we've come into a clearing so this is much better it's quite windy i'm probably going to pick up some wind here there you can see st michael's mount off in the distance and this is mounts bay so we're going to head over this headland here to our left uh down to a set of rocks which is actually where um hms war spike ran aground beautiful day for it and remember if you are um, checking out this location yourself there is a public footpath you can use to cross some of the fields don't just go walking straight across farmers fields if they've got livestock in there especially stick to the paths do as you're told and all will be well I'm trying my best to stay out of this shot with my shadow but these are moorings which were used in conjunction with that pulley system and winch to the wreck at the time of HMS Warspike which was positioned just here so pretty much from where that large rock is sticking out um, out to about here And this is the location. Let's head down to these rocks to see if we can position a bit of a then and now photo. It seems almost inconceivable now, but this short stretch of Cornish coast near Marazion should have witnessed the death of one of the Royal Navy's most famous battleships, HMS Warspite. The Admiralty finally approved her scrapping in July 1946 and she sailed from Spithead to Portsmouth to have her guns removed. On a grey day in April 1947, 
the war spite embarks on her last voyage from Portsmouth to Faz Lane on the River Clyde for scrapping. On the way, she ran into a fierce storm. She broke her toes and ended up on the Mount Mopus ledge near Cudden Point. On the next high tide, she refloated herself, only to go hard aground a few yards away in Prussia Cove. The skeleton crew of seven men were all saved by the Penley lifeboat, but for the war spike, there was to be no reprieve. There were several attempts to refloat her, but she was by now too badly damaged. So there we go, on these rocks behind me, HMS Warspike ran aground all those years ago. And it seems like such a shame that such a storied and well-known uh, warship met its end on this jagged Cornish coastline. Where it had been moved to Mounts Bay and over the course of the next five years, it was ripped to pieces by salvagers, but also by the Atlantic Ocean. And to me, it just seems like such a waste and such a shame. But we've shown you the location where HMS Warspike ran aground all those years ago. In 1950, a final attempt was made to refloat her, using two tugs and 24 compressors to pump air into her hull. Watched by a large crowd from the clifftops, the tugs were unable to tow her. One ended up on the rocks, and the other got a hawser wrapped around her prop. By now, it was obvious that the war spike would never be taken to the Clyde for scrapping, so it was decided to cut her up where she lay. For ease of access, they managed to move her the short distance to a beach alongside St. Michael's Mount. And over the next five years, she was chopped up, little by little, until she disappeared from view. I want to finish with an epitaph written by a former crew member after she had been wrecked. You say you have no subject and your brushes all have dried, but come to Marazying at the ebbing of the tide and look you out to see where my lady battle scarred, hugs the rocks that is more welcome than the shameful breaker's yard. Paint her there upon the sunset in her glory and despair with a diadem of victory still in flower upon her hair. Let her whisper as she settles of her blooding long ago, in the mist that mingles Jutland with the might of Scapa Flow. Let her tell you too of Narvik, with its snowy hills and then, of Matapan, Salerno and the shoals of Walcheren. And finally of Malta, when along the purple street came in trail the Roman navy to surrender at her feet. Of all these honours conscious, how could she bear to be delivered to the spoiler or severed from the sea? So hasten then and paint her in the last flush of her pride on the rocks of Marazion at the ebbing of the tide. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit the like button and leave me a comment? I reply to every single one. And if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to my channel where I have a whole list of videos just waiting to reach you. Until next time.